close to sending you a bill to begin the process of replacing OSHA in Florida. How do you respond to critics that say that this is a political stunt and would not eliminate vaccine mandates at all? Well, first of all, I think there are two different issues. Um, there's a lot of states that don't do OSHA that they've done. So it's not like, I mean, Florida, I think we may be a majority of the states, but there's a lot of states that are not in OSHA. And I think it's, uh, it's an appropriate response given how heavy handed OSHA is being. I mean, these agencies, when they're doing things, you, you expect that this is being done in some factual basis. But if you read that OSHA rule, it's ignorance running amok. They don't recognize core scientific facts like immunity conferred through prior infection. They explicitly say that somebody that's recovered from COVID does not have protection when we know that's not true. Israel did an exhaustive study. The Cleveland Clinic has done studies uh, showing that those folks are, uh, are, do indeed have protection. And so if you are concerned about workplace safety, you would acknowledge that uh, and not try to have someone fired from their job you know, over, over the shots. But at the end of the day, when an agency comes in and is threatening to kick people out of work, in the midst of an economy that needs more people in these key industries, mind you, because the, the, the fallout from COVID, even though Florida, we're back to pre-COVID unemployment policies, you gotta search for work, your time, all that stuff, and there's hundreds of thousands of jobs available in Florida, even though we're there, and yes, we've done better than some other states who have different policies, but you know, you still don't have everyone back in like we would want. And so they're threatening to basically cause truckers to be fired, other key people in logistics and operations that are so key to the supply chain. Why you would do that, uh, I don't know. But I think that rule, uh, it's 500 pages of a bureaucracy run amok. And so if that's the case and the legislature wants us to go in a different direction, you know, I think that that's appropriate response. The most important thing, though, in this special session is to make sure that no one is losing their jobs over these shots. OK, we have firefighters, cops, people that work in all kinds of industries for private businesses that have been working this entire time. Many of them, as I as I mentioned, already have uh, immunity through prior infection. And so the bottom line is, uh, this is not something that should be coerced onto people. And that's been our position from day one, available for all, mandatory for none. Uh, but I never thought we'd get to the point in this country where people were going to be denied an ability to earn a living, potentially, um, based on a COVID shot. Uh, that's just not the way to do it. So we're going to have substantive protections. The legislature is going to provide substantive protections. Yes, it will push back on OSHA. But it will also say if a private uh, corporation is trying to do this on their own, hold on a minute, you know, we don't want people to be discriminated against on the basis of that. So if we're able to get that done, then that'll be a very good thing. There'll be some other good stuff, I think, that's in there. But that's the core issue right now. I don't want to see Floridians lose their jobs. I want Floridians to be able to earn a living, provide for their families. We need more of that, not less of that. It's, it's, it's an interesting process. There's no doubt about it. There's a, a lot of different moving parts. And as, um, you know, uh, Daniel Andrews mentioned, you know, the core has a unique culture. They have a unique way of, of doing things. They're great people, but it's just, it's a bureaucracy. And it's a more cumbersome bureaucracy than even other elements of the military and other elements of the federal government. And um, in fact, I remember the first time when I met with President Trump about this issue, and I said, look, I, I, we need some help on Lake Okeechobee. And, all, and I was explaining to him, very receptive. And I was like, but, you know, the problem is, you know, the Army Corps is discharging it. And he's like, oh, my gosh, the Corps, they're so heavy. Because, I mean, it's like it's been it's difficult uh, just because of their processes. So uh, with all that said, though, you know, I think that there was uh, I think the Corps was receptive to a lot of the concerns on the community. Uh, I think they've made a good faith effort uh, to work through these issues. And so at the end of the day, if we can get a way forward uh, that's going to respect, you know, all the different stakeholders and, and try to strike an appropriate balance, then, then that'll be fine. Um, you know, I wish I wish some of this stuff were a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, we just want a good path forward for everybody. We want our, um, you know, obviously we don't want to see Lake Okeechobee 
flood those nearby communities, which is the reason they discharge water. I mean, we want to protect those folks, of course, but we also want to protect um, our estuaries and protect our coastal communities from having, I mean, you know, you look, when you have these, these blooms, uh, that hurts the fishermen, it hurts the, the hotels, the restaurants, it hurts everything, and it has a huge impact. And so when, um, when I became governor, it was on the heels of the 2018 summer, which was a really, really bad summer. I came in, we did this, the core did change. We had virtually no, no discharges in 2019, pretty much. And, and things were so much better. And so, and I know there's other factors. It's not just the discharges, but I believe that the discharges, you know, cause problems and then they can exacerbate other problems. So if we can get to a point where that is being minimized in the, in the summer season, man, we're going to be in such good shape. But the last three years have been done so much better than had been done previously. I do want to acknowledge that. Um, and, uh, and hopefully we can keep that going forward. We are putting our money where our mouth is, though. Yes, we don't control the, the, the lake. It's the core. We're working with the core on all that, but we're also building the types of infrastructure where these discharges, you know, hopefully will not even be necessary in the future as we have a, we're basically re, re-engineering Florida's plumbing so that the, the water's flowing where it should, should flow. And that's going to be great, I think, for all involved. So thanks, everyone, for being here. We appreciate it. We're really excited about these announcements.